So let's talk about what it would take for you guys to get started on your own uh, party rental business or inflatable business with just your income tax return. Now, there's going to be a couple caveats to this. Uh, one, you're going to have to have your own transportation, which means you're going to have to have a truck or a van or a trailer or something, something that you can deliver the units with already. Uh, and also, you're going to have to have... Uh, uh, some sort of storage facility, whether it be a barn or garage or, um, you know, a storage unit, some, something you could put the units in um, so that you can, you know, keep them dry and, and safe while in between the rentals. So if you have those things and if you are willing to, uh, you know, dedicate your uh, tax return then you will be able to open up the uh, inflatable rental business and make that extra money or, you know, begin a business that will grow into something that you can do full time. Um, I've been doing it myself. I've been doing it for about 19 years now and I've seen a, a whole lot out there. Obviously I, nobody knows everything. I don't know any, I'm not going to report to know everything, uh, but I can give you a lot of good pointers and I can give you a lot of uh, good information that, that will be useful. The only other thing is, is that we're going to assume that your uh, income tax return is going to be between eight and ten thousand dollars. And and again, I know that that's not everybody, um, but if you you know in this day and age, if you have a, a, a few kids and, and you're making you know under a certain amount of money, um, it's not too far out of the the ordinary to. To assume that you're going to have ten thousand dollars on a return for, for your uh, income tax. So, all that in mind, let's get started, and we'll put together uh, what it's going to take for you guys to go into business. What I'm going to do today is I'm going to show you guys how to do this with as little money as possible to maximize the amount, amount of profit as possible and to make sure you're doing all the things that are going to keep your business in business and keep your, your customers rolling in and keep that money coming in. If you're going into business, rule number one, you're going into business to make money. So let's keep that in mind from the very beginning of when we start the planning phase to the, you know, rolling it out, actually starting to make money and, and, and growth and everything else. The number one job for your business is to generate revenue, make money. We're going to create a business for you guys simply by using your tax return and it'll be something that will initially will, will be used to supplement some other kind of income. It's not going to be a full-time job. It's not going to be something that you're going to be able to, you know, support your household off of, but it will uh, initially, you know, augment that, that income and create a situation where it's a little easier on you guys. It's going to take a lot of work, a lot of elbow grease, um, but we're also going to uh, intensify the growth of this so that within a year or two, you've you've not only grown it to the point where you're making a, a huge amount of money, but you're also um, self-sufficient and that you're you know creating the income to pay yourselves, pay your employees, pay all your bills, and keep growing or. Uh, you know, move into other aspects of, of, of the business or, you know, just do, doing whatever you need to do, maybe even saving or, or you know, purchasing uh, something that is a little more uh, permanent like a uh, real estate or something like that so that you can get into um, 
you know, something that'll that'll get you into your your golden years. Um, it right now is the perfect time because we're in we're in the t- tax season. Uh, it's 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 after the holidays and we're you're starting the new year, and it is time for us to to get busy and to create a situation where we're going to start generating some revenue and uh, get ready. We want to prep now before the taxes get in. Uh, or, or just as the taxes get in, and we want to do things that are going to allow us to uh, run right into the business when we need to. So right now, we're going to be starting to look at, at you know, doing our, our taxes and, and uh, you know, setting up our tax ID number, also our permits or business licenses, those kind of things that, that you need to do on the, the back end of the business to make you legal and to make it to where you will uh, be able to get into other, other you know, uh, customers and aspects of the business that, that may be limited to some of the folks that are doing it as a mom and pop and, and aren't doing it, you know, the, the legal way or the right way by not paying their taxes. And that's probably the most important part of, of this is, is to make sure that you are, you're in a situation where you, you could generate the revenue um, and do it legally and you're open to all the customers. So, you know, having your tax ID number, paying your sales tax, having your insurance, having your stuff inspected, doing all the things that you need to do, um, super important so that you can, you can create all those or, or grab all those customer base. And those are important, uh, especially initially because what you want to do is utilize those to generate more revenue. If you go into a school and you create a situation where you're being uh, viewed by a lot of kids and stuff, they're going to take those ideas home to their parents, and you will, you know, get those those same customers over and over again uh, during, you know, the the off season or out of the season of the school. Another cool thing about school is the business that you're going to do at a school is during the week. So generally, it's not going to interfere with your home parties at all. Um, so, you know, doing things Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday, um, and, and leaving it open for the weekends for you to do your other stuff. Now, the the kind of the downside is, is that you have to make sure that you are in a situation where you can do this. So if it's interfering with your full-time job or you don't have a way to, to, to deliver these, it may be difficult for you to do them and still do you know, the, the work that you needed to do to, to, to you know, put food on the table. Keep that in mind. Don't overextend yourself. Don't get yourself in a situation where you can't do something or uh, put your, your spouse or, or loved one in a situation where they're doing you know, a work that, that is beyond their capabilities. Um, it's, it's physical work and it's going to be difficult. Um, so you need to, to kind of look at that. This isn't going to be something that you're going to be able to do full time when you first start. It's going to be difficult um, to generate the kind of revenue that's going to be needed to both grow and to support yourself. But if this is something that a spouse is doing and, and you're creating, a, a, you know, an income for your your household, or you could do it part time, or maybe even something that you could do with your kids, it's an amazing way to, to to learn a lot about the business without a lot of downside, and at the same time creating a situation where you can grow into something that's going to be um, worthwhile and something that's going to be a full-time situation for you and your family. Um, I've done it for a number of years, like I said, and I've enjoyed it. My family have learned a lot of valuable lessons about business and about life simply by, you know, doing that the part of the business. So um, keep that in mind. Um, again, what we're doing for the first year is 
using the, the, the minimum amount of, of, of money and the maximum amount of growth so that we can get to the point where we're you know, going to a full-time situation or we're getting to the point where the business is self-sufficient and it is not trying to draw uh, more energy and time and money from, from you or your family so that you uh, can keep going. Set in mind. When you pick your storage facility, uh, a couple things to remember is, is that you're going to do a lot of loading and unloading. And depending on the height of your 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 vehicle or your, your trailer, uh, it may be a little more difficult for you to, to lift a unit uh, once you got it home and you're unloading or into a, a truck to have it delivered. So um, we built our uh, docks. A little high they're about uh, two and a half maybe yeah about two and a half feet off the ground and they have you know just enough room in the back to where we can uh, store some units and not bury them um, that's kind of important because you don't want to get a situation where you're going so deep that you've got 15 units in front of the stuff that you need and you're constantly shuffling and moving also having enough uh, storage so that you can kind of separate your units and put them in a different place to where you know you know these particular items are here your bounce houses are here your water slides are here your combos your obstacles whatever however you want to do it and again also make sure you've got a, a, a facility that's going to keep them clean and dry and warm and uh, secure so that uh, you don't lose them Okay, let's start with your budget. The budget is going to be the probably the most important part of getting through this and making sure that you maintain the the amount of money that you want to to um, put forth into this and 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 allow for this without interfering with any of your other income or or your finances. And at the same time, it's going to determine what kind of growth that you're going to have, um, at least initially. Um, it's going to set the parameters for your business. So we're going to uh, we are going to imagine that your your income tax return uh, with your family uh, with some earned income credit and things like that is going to be between um, seven and ten thousand dollars. Now this may be a, a way over what you you're looking at. Uh, it may be, you know, out of the out of the bounds of, of what you're looking at. We're going to set this as a, as a medium. If your income tax return isn't in in this parameters, 
Um, probably what you're going to have to do is supplement that with some other form of, of, of monies or there may be some budgeting that you can do to, that will allow you. For instance, if you if you are looking at a three thousand dollar return, um, there are some things that you can do that will get you still get you in the in the door, but it's going to be a little bit more work, and it's going to also take away from the income that you're drawing from. Because what you're going to do is you're either going to finance or get some sort of loan or something like that to to uh, augment the, the starting money that you're going to need. And that's going to take away from the income that you're going to get. So, seven to ten thousand dollars is your shooting is what you're shooting at. If you don't have that, or if that's not going to be what is what you're looking at, then then you're going to have to do some some fancy footwork to to get to that kind of point. With that, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, divide it into uh, certain categories budgeting. And create uh, an ability for you to pay uh, what you need to pay out of that, and at the same time, um, you know, keep the numbers flowing in the in the direction that you want to go, and not get outside of that. Um, I suggest that you do not uh, rob from Peter to pay Paul. Uh, you don't skimp on one to kind of create an aspect for another. It would be it would probably be a better decision to to do a little bit more shopping, a little more footwork, and a little more, you know, uh, on your part to kind of relegate those numbers down to to a level that you need them to be, instead of, you know, just assuming that you can take you really like this piece or you really like this insurance company or whatever whatever it is, and you're just going to take from this one to pay pay the money for that one. With that being said, you can't get your insurance until you have your, your inflatable. So money in hand, uh, what you want to do now is start looking for the right uh, inflatable company. Now, I'm going to, to tell you that about $3,000 is going to go towards insurance plus all your uh, other expenses like your business license and things like that. Uh, that should be more than enough money to, to take care of what you're going to need to at the level that you're starting at so that you're not in a situation where you're 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 you know paying a huge amount of money if you're you get some quotes from some insurance companies and they go higher than that you probably need to do a little searching around now i want to caution you this is very very important Inflatable insurance is not regular insurance. It's not regular business insurance. It's not a blanket liability or something like that. You literally have to get it from a company that 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 offers this type of insurance. So don't be fooled into believing that you can you can go to a company like you know I don't know what the names of them are. There's tons of them out there, and they're going to give you some kind of blanket insurance company, and it's going to cover everything. It will not cover you. Uh, if, if something were to happen um, and and that literally will be the quickest way that you will not only be put out of business but you will also be you know hampered on your side as well um, maybe even suffering some liability from things that are to come so be very very careful make sure you go to a reputable company and you're paying you know the correct amount of money to get the, the policy that you're going to need um, again, they're not going to insure you until they know what you're, you're getting and what you're insuring. So what I want you to do is, is to take the $3,000 off the top of what you got and um, use that money uh, to get all your licenses and your fees and your inspections and all the things that you're going to need. So that money is going to be set to the top and, and, and also... Uh, will give you the number that you're going to be left with to buy your equipment. Now, when you're buying your equipment, let's just say that, that you have the $7,000. We're going to go middle of the road. Hopefully, you'll have more more than the range of ten. But let's say you have the $7,000. That's going to leave you $4,000 for units. Not a lot of money uh, for you to do that, especially since you're going to have to do other things like make sure you have the proper stakes and cords and, and blowers and, and tarps and things that you're going to need to um, 
generate the revenue that you're going to do. This being said, you need to pick a date that you're going to start. Um, so you have the money in hand and you're, you're now shopping for, for units. Should you go used or should you go new? I do not suggest that uh, you go all in one way or the other until you've done your research, until you, you checked and seen uh, what's available out there and what people are offering and, and what you can get. If you're looking at used units, it is very, very important that you inspect the unit before you purchase it. Uh, I would not buy a used unit that is over five years old. I would not buy a water unit that's over three years old. And the reason why is the degradation of the, the vinyl beyond that point is is such that it, it will tear, it will come apart, it will, you're going to have problems with it. Uh, and, and, and the worst thing that you can do is to buy a unit, go, you know, one or two months into business, and then you have a major problem with your unit, like a baffle being, being blown or, you know, a, a, a tear because of the vinyl is starting to give way during at the seams or, you know, one of the millions of things that you, that could happen. Velcro that is, is starting to give way and is, is no longer viable and won't hold your mats down. There's tons of things that, that could happen. Uh, so make sure that you do a proper inspection and look at it and feel it and make sure that the, the material is 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 uh, pliable, not stiff, not crunchy. Make sure that your Velcro is holding, that it is, you know, is solid and, 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 and not giving way. Uh, make sure that the zippers are intact. Make sure that the seams seem uh, like they are in good shape. Uh, no major holes, um, especially on the play side of the unit. Now, a hole on the bottom of the unit is totally different from a hole on top of the unit. And the reason why is, is that holes present a danger not only in that they create an opportunity for the air to escape, which is your first impulse with an inflatable, but it is, a, is it an opportunity for a kid to put their fingers or their hands or their toes or something into it and, and cause, you know, problems with it. Also... Once a, a seam starts giving way, the more pressure is put on the seam, the more it's going to give way, and eventually you can have, you know, a catastrophic failure there. Um, on the bottom of the unit, these things usually aren't an issue because um, the pressure of the unit sitting on top of it, and as well as the, you know, the accessibility for kids to get to it, they're not going to put their fingers into it if it's on the bottom of the unit because it's obviously on the ground. That being said, you need to make sure that the unit is holding enough air that, that, you know, there's not giant holes in the bottom or anywhere in it that is causing problems. And the quickest and easiest way to do this is to look at what is recommended for the unit as far as blowers. And that should be printed on the, the, uh, the, the information panel sewn onto the unit and have them blow it up with that type of blower. One horsepower blower should blow up a bounce house. It should be nice and firm. There shouldn't be any uh, ability for it to tip over or, or something like that. So when you're looking at your unit, if you can you know, push on one of the sidewalls and the whole thing's collapsing off of a, a one, one horsepower blower, you're having an issue with that. Again, just an example. Tons of other things that need to go on. So look at the recommendation for the unit as far as how big of a blower, put that blower on it and see where it goes from there. Um, that will help you to kind of determine whether or not your, your seams are stretched or there's a hole that you don't see or there's any kind of things going on. Also, an inflated unit will give you an opportunity to do a thorough inspection and make sure that, um, you know, there are no holes, there are no seams that have come apart, there's no um, places that have uh, created an issue so yes, inflation of the unit is important. Um, don't rely on just pictures. If you're going to buy it, I would go there to wherever the person is 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 presenting it. Um, 
have them blow it up and do the inspection yourself because they're not going to show you the problems if they're trying to sell it they're going to show you the, they're going to highlight the good parts of the the unit and they may even show you some pictures of, of, of years gone by or other units or brand new units or something that has nothing to do with the situation that you're in right now so make sure that you are looking at the actual unit and you're doing the inspection that you need to do um, once you've inspected the unit and you've picked out the ones that you've wanted um, these you know these will be the ones that you'll pick up the good thing about a used unit is, is generally you can get it for about 25 to 50 percent off depending on the age and the shape and the whole nine yards of the unit uh, compared to a new the bad thing is, is sometimes you're rolling the dice and you're getting things that you don't understand. It may look good. It may seem like it's holding up well, but you know, you get it out in the field and, and it falls apart. And, and again, a, a major uh, repair like a baffle or something like that can cost you hundreds or even thousands of dollars on top of the price of the unit. So it's going to put you in a situation where um, the unit it really isn't a savings at all especially if one baffle gives you know what do you do uh, do you repair them all what do you, I mean it, it's literally going to be a situation where you're you're every time you take it out you may have another incident where something else gives away so used units again can save you money but they can also cost you in the long run my very first unit was a bounce house. I paid $400 for it. And literally I made thousands upon thousands of dollars on that unit. Uh, it, it was very well made. It went out tons of times. Um, it, it was a situation where, um, you know, I, I got really, really lucky. Um, so um, a little hint here bounce houses, obstacle courses, um, things that generally stay dry, things that generally uh, are, are age restrictive uh, or weight restrictive um, uh, are, are going to hold up better simply because um, the way that they're being played with. You, you generally won't see you know, a, a bunch of adults on a bounce house continuously. Now you may have adults get in there and play a little bit, but there's not gonna be a situation where like on a giant water slide where you've got all day, every day, you know, adults going up and down at 200 and 300 pounds uh, each, creating a situation where they're putting a lot of stress and, and problems on the, on the unit. Um, so keep that in mind, bounce houses, obstacles, uh, maybe combos sometimes um, anything that is dry and again I have some some dry units um, that are 12 13 uh, years old and are still going out and are still in good shape and they're still you know functional and, and maintained and, and the whole nine yards on the flip side I've got some water slides that that uh, after three years I'm, I'm looking to replace because of the amount of use and the type of use that goes on to those, those units. So keep, keep that in mind. Um, when you're picking your units, there's a couple things that you need to kind of keep in mind. Um, the very first part of this uh, video, I told you that your purpose of your business is to make money. Now, the hardest thing you're going to do is to pick units that do that and not pick units that tickle your fancy or that you think are special or you think that you like or, or whatever. You're not a kid. You're not uh, in the market. You're not buying this for you. You're not uh, creating a situation where uh, this will be something that you're an ex expert on. So you need to go outside of your wheelhouse and, and, and find experts. And the way that you do that just go to the people that are that are in the business that are around you and look at the things that they've got. If they've got more water slides than anything, then you probably need to gear yourself towards water slides. If they've got, uh, you know, bounce houses, but they are on the low end of the bounce houses, uh, 
the, what they're probably doing is, 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 you know, doing the generic bounce house for the, the cheap parties. If they're, you know, they're, they've got more interactive things, uh, obstacle courses or big, big games, wrecking balls and things like that, they're probably doing more school events uh, or, or, you know, things like that. So kind of kind of keep that in mind and kind of keep in mind what the kind of business you're going to do you're going to initially do backyard parties so you need to gear your stuff towards backyard parties and the reason why initially you're going to do backyard parties um is because you're not going to have the, the the amount of equipment that you're going to need to get into those other kind of events now that's not to say that you're not going to try and that's not to say that you're not going to do several of them but what you're going to do for every one school event, you're probably going to do 10 or 15 backyard parties. So gear your stuff towards that, but also keep in mind, you know, that, that you need to keep it universal. Um, dual lane slides um, are, are great because it, it offers you an opportunity to sell this to, to big events and also small events, but they're also heavy. This is another thing you need to kind of keep in mind. When picking your units, pick the units that you can handle. Don't get something that is 800 pounds if you're trying to do this by yourself because you're not going to be able to do it. And every time that you have to hire somebody to help you, you're taking money out of your pocket. So, small slides, 16 foots, uh, 15 foots. You can even go up to an 18 foot. Uh, I, can, I can handle an 18 foot with a van or with a trailer i would not suggest anything above that 20 22 24 30 simply because you're not going to be able to handle it you're not going to be able to do it and you're going to take money out of your pocket by hiring people to, to try to do this now you'll make more money uh because your clientele will will kind of expand but at the same time this is something that you're going to work into this is not something you're going to start out at small slides are the number one renter in my inventory uh, 16 to 18 foot slides absolutely perfect for making the, the right kind of money um, so keep that in mind they work dry they work indoors they work outdoors they work wet they are the you know three season um, inflatables that, that that literally are the backbone of, of your uh, party rental business so one of your units needs to be a wet dry slide again choose your size and choose you know whatever type or whatever that you're going to get but at least one of them needs to be probably two now if you have you start off with the seven thousand you've already put three thousand towards that that means you got four thousand you know a good slide is going to cost you between two thousand and three thousand dollars it new uh, you may want to make that your 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 uh, linchpin of your 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 inventory and put your money into that because that's the one that's going to go out the most. So spend the money on that and then pick up a used bounce house that's in good shape for six seven hundred dollars, and then one other unit from there. Combo units are good. Um, again, you're doing backyard stuff, so maybe, uh, maybe even in another little slide, you could pick up a, a used 12 foot slide, um, and use that for, for smaller toddlers and things like that. Um, and, and, and fill out your inventory, uh, with, with that other $1,200 and then you've got your three pieces. Um, again, if you have more money, you want to do that. Start with the best unit that, that you know of. Build around that. Bounce houses are going to rent. I've been doing it for, you know, umpteen years. And, and I've never had a year where, you know, I wasn't doing plenty of bounce houses. But the revenue that you generate off of a bounce house pales in comparison to the revenue that you're going to generate off of a, a, a good slide or a good combo unit or an obstacle or something like that. Again, do not follow your heart because you are not the customer. Follow the customer's heart and go with the unit that's going to make you the money. You're in business to make money. This is what you're looking for. Go with that. Also, remember, uh, if you pick something that is themed, you are literally going to limit your, your crowd. 
I know that sounds crazy, and I know that sounds like it's it goes against the grain, but what you're going to find is is that people uh, are going to pick their party, uh, and then and then you know build the theme around that, and literally will pass you by if you have you know this thing. You're better off going with something that's multicolored that will fit in. For instance, if you have a red and yellow bounce house, that can go as Mickey Mouse, that can go as Superman, that can go as SpongeBob, that could, I mean, it could fit into a ton of parties simply because the colors will match. As opposed to you picking a SpongeBob bounce and then they've got a Disney Princess party going on, you are not going to rent that, that, that unit. Keep that in mind. Um... Uh, you you want to go with something that's generic. You do not go with the fluff. Do not go with the the theme because that will you know cut away from the the money that you're going to be able to make. Um. So you've got your budget. You've got your units picked out. Again, this is all going to be a lot of research on your your part, and especially if you're dealing with with used units. And shipping and all the other costs that comes with this, this may take you some time and some effort. So be prepared to spend some time traveling. Be prepared to spend some time, you know, doing what you're going to do. You don't have to inspect a new unit for the most part, but you do need to kind of vet the company that you're going with. Check with, you know, how long they've been in business, the kind of units that they offer, the kind of uh, price points that they offer the side of the country that they're on. If you're on the West Coast, you should not be buying East Coast. There's a ton of guys on the West Coast. Why would you pay for that extra shipping if you're, you're literally going to get a generic unit that, that any of the ones in your area could be making? And also, you could save money on shipping by going and picking it up. I live in Georgia. I drive to Florida and pick up my units, and it costs me, if I buy several units, it costs me a lot less to, to Put them in my van and do the, the five hour trip down and five hours back. Um, I save tons of money as opposed to you know the three, four, five, six hundred dollars in shipping costs that I would have paid. Uh, so pick pick a a, a a a company that is close to you. Um, they will have an understanding of of what sells. Use their expertise talk to them talk to the salesman talk to the people and, and ask them you know let them know that you're getting in the business they want you to succeed because they want you to keep buying stuff from them which makes them succeed so what you want to do is, is is use their expertise ask them a lot of questions and 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 you know fill out all the 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 the, the holes that you've got in your your plan with their information, with their ideas. Um, again, I use a couple different um, providers, and the reason why is because I I, I don't want to get in a situation where I'm I'm wholly dependent on one, and something happens or you know something falls through. Also, a lot of them will will run different specials throughout the year. So again, pick a couple of them. And you may not be buying from several of them at one time, but you can use several of them um, in your area. They're going to have a warranty on the unit that's going to last for you know some period of time. This will get you through that issue that you have with the used ones where you don't know if it's going to, to generate the revenue that it's going to make um, its money back. You usually won't have to worry about that with a new unit. Now, that being said... If you buy uh, something that is is lower quality or something that is is not commercial quality, you're going to have a piece that is not commercial quality. There are some reputable companies out there that sell these ultra lights and and non commercial lights and super lights and all these, and they sound wonderful until the price is great and and everything kind of picks checks all the boxes until you start sending it out there to your customers and they use it like a used a, a rental piece your customers are going to to treat it like a rental piece they're going to jump on it hard they're going to 
you know, use the, the, the equipment in such a way that it, it's going to, um, be used and abused. And if this thing is, is a lower grade of material, it's going to suffer in such a way that you're not going to be able to, to, to rent it as much and make the kind of money that you need to make to keep your business going. Okay. Keep that in mind. Commercial quality, it's going to be a little heavier. It's going to be a little, and let them know you want something that's heavy duty because you want this piece that you're buying with your hard earned money. This is going to be the linchpin of your company. You want it to last. I want a, I want a good quality piece. When you start your, 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 uh, event company, um, you're going to be very, very excited to get out there and get the business done. But if you get out there and you, 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 you run before you walk, you're going to have problems. If you start offering pieces and showing, Hey, look, this is the piece that I bought and you don't have it in your inventory yet. You can be sitting there for months before this thing shows up and your customers are going to not only get mad at you because they've planned their party around the, the brand new unit that you've said that you were going to have, uh, but they're going to spread the word that you, you, you can't fulfill the, the, the promises that you make. That being said, don't advertise. Don't get out there and tell them that you got stuff until you have it in hand. If you don't have the equipment in your facility, you don't have it. So don't even offer it. This is a hard, hard lesson to learn. You're going to want to get it out there. You're going to want to show it. And, and what you're going to run into is that the, your providers are going to have delays. There's going to be situations where things don't, don't go right. Um, I can tell you tons of stories where I ordered pieces and I didn't check to see if they had it in stock. They manufactured it in China. And it literally took them six months to get it to me. So I, I had offered a piece and it sat on my website and I had had it in my inventory, uh, in my uh, uh, advertisements for six months and the customers were mad. I had a, a company that sent me a piece. It went to the, sh the shipping dock. The shipping dock uh, company called the house and didn't get in touch with me and didn't leave a message and shipped the unit back. And I, I literally didn't know. And after, after three or four days of not hearing anything beyond the date that it was supposed to be, you know, delivered, I called them and they said, nope, we sent it back. And I called the company that they sent it back to. And they said, well, they say they tried to call you and you didn't, you didn't answer your phone. So, um, you know, we, we can send it back to you, but it's going to be another shipping charge. <laughs> I had that piece going out to schools because it was a game and I had it, it is scheduled for, for, you know, tons of stuff. And it literally was back at, at the manufacturer and they didn't want to make any kind of, uh, concessions for me. So I, I told them to cancel the order. Um, again, things are going to happen. So you need to be very, very careful. Make sure that that piece is in your inventory before you do your marketing. Now, Let's talk about marketing. Marketing is going to be huge. It's going to be very, very important. And the way that you do your marketing, at least initially, you're not going to have any money to, to do marketing. So what you want to do is, is do the legwork yourself. You want to put out flyers where you can put out flyers. You want to do Facebook posts where you can do Facebook. Instagram where you can do Instagram. You want to hit your friends and family hard first. You want to order car business cards for $6 and you want to pass them out everywhere that you go. You want to buy t-shirts and, and wear them everywhere that you go with your logo on them. You want to do as much advertising as you can. You want to buy magnets that go on the side of your vehicle and you want to put them on the side of your vehicle. Do as much legwork that you can do for as least amount of, 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 you know, price that you can do to get that marketing done. Facebook has marketplace. Facebook has yard sale sites, you know, Instagram and all the other, all the other you know, uh, companies have 
Social media companies have the ability for you to, to get out there in front of your, your, your customer base. In person, you need to be going to all your schools. You need to go to all your churches and you need to offer your services and you need to, to show them what you got once you have it and put together a small package. That being said, if you're going to have three units and you're going to put together a package for a school, you need to kind of, you know, base those that inventory around that. A bounce house for a school is going to be difficult. You'd be better off with a combo because they can get off the combo. That being said, um, not having the bounce house is going to be something that, that is going to be detrimental to your backyard party. So you need to make sure people are not going to want to pay, you know, three hundred fifty dollars for a combo unit when when the guy down the street has a bounce house for a hundred, hundred fifty. So you know, make sure you determine what you're going to do, what you're going to work towards initially starting is that you want to get your spring business to buy you another slide for summer. This is your goal. You're going to get your tax return. You're going to, to make your purchases and set up all your inventory and, and do all your licenses and all your fees and in, inspections and everything. All of this has to be done before the end of winter in your area. In most cases, Easter is your, is your is your go point. So, everything that you do has to be done before Easter. Let's set that as a goal. You want inventory in your in your possession, stakes, blowers, tarps, units, everything that you're going to need before Easter. Then what you're going to do is the first thing you're going to do is hit the churches, the schools, and, 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 and the municipalities and try to do some Easter events. Again, you got to have the stuff in your inventory before you do this. So it's going to be tough. You need to get all this done uh, February. Um, and then shoot for Easter as your big event. Now I I go from holiday to holiday and the reason why is is it, it it's it's easy to advertise for a holiday. It's easy to put a picture of your unit and a and 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 impose a picture of the Easter bunny next to it and tell people, "Hey, if for Easter you can do an Easter egg hunt with our bounce house." It's easy to go from holiday to holiday. It's, it's, it's a super what you don't even have to think about it. There's no there's no licensing fees or any of this other stuff that you have to worry about. You can literally add the Easter Bunny to anything you got, and all of a sudden it it becomes something that is desirable. So shoot for Easter, do your advertising around Easter, and and work towards that. Now your advertising is going to be one month out for everything. So one month before Easter, you need to be advertising Easter. Your next holiday past Easter is going to be your end of school events. So you need to work towards that. And again, that's a lot of focus on your schools. Um, so so you need to make sure that you have the equipment ready and 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 you know in the in the in the pipeline to do the things that you need to do. I suggest that you, you, you make a friend with an inflatable company that's near you. And this is for a couple of reasons. One, you can offer advice. They can offer you advice. Uh, they can, they can offer you, uh, things that you may be lacking. Say you're short of steaks or you're short of sandbags or you're short of, you know, things that you may need. Uh, they can they can fill in those gaps, and also if you get in a situation where your customer needs something, and you can't provide the items that they need, you will be able to fill their order, and that will go ten times further than you saying sorry, can't do it, no, and hanging up the phone. Taking helping take care of the customer is going to to be your basic biggest asset. And even if you're giving the business to another company, at least you're still taking care of that customer. So make friends with a, a local company. You're not in competition. Competition does not exist in our industry. Listen to what I just said. I want to say this and make it very, very clear for everyone out there. 
competition does not exist in our industry. The reason why is that your customer base are children from between 2 and 12, and that's just on the low end. How many children in your area are between the ages of 2 and 12? And how many of those children have bounce houses in their yards on any given weekend? Do you honestly think that there's enough bounce houses in America to fill the orders that should be going out? They're not. There's no such thing as competition in our industry. You don't have enough. The other guy don't have enough. The only reason why more people don't have bounce houses is because they're not thinking about it and you're not getting in front of them. You're not creating the, the buzz that is needed for them to rent a unit. Period. That's it. So once you can do that, once you can you could fill that buzz where you can you can make them excited about this, you can create a situation where they want this, then you're going to uh, see more business than you could handle. Keep that in mind. When we get this together, the first thing we want to do is get ready for Easter, get everything out there, put a bunch of stuff, and then from Easter until May. The 1st of May, you want to try to get enough stuff on the books that you're starting to get ready to order another slide. So you need to put a thousand, two thousand to three thousand dollars in your bank account so that you can get ready to order another slide. Now, as soon as you order that slide, you, you're going to have to contact your insurance company. You're going to have to do a couple other different things to make sure that, you know, it's inspected and everything that you got to do that you normally do with all your other stuff. You're going to do this with your, your new unit. So keep that in mind. But that will get you in a situation where when you're ready to start for summer. You have two water slides and the other units, and that's going to put you ahead. You're going to be making twice as much money on those water slides than you would be when you first started. And you're literally just now getting into business. We're going to stop our video here. Uh, I don't want to, I can go on and on and on. We're going to talk about the next phase of it after uh, we, we kind of digest this. So get ready for the next video. I appreciate you guys. Uh, looking at this i appreciate your interest in, in in being in the bounce house business it's a wonderful wonderful industry to be in if you'll give me a like and a subscribe and, and i can keep you know bringing you these kind of informations and we're going to work through this together um get you to the point to where you're you're making tons of money uh in the next video i'm going to show you how to get through your summer i'm going to show you how you are going to start uh benefiting from the business in such a way that you you know it's 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 generating uh, uh uh benefits for you uh beyond monetary uh it's creating a situation where you're making money and you're saving money um and and that will help you and your family and also how you can you can incorporate your kids and, and keep them in in involved and and interested in your business and keep it going so that you know you can you can all benefit from it it's a great business to be in again thanks for watching give us a subscribe and we'll see you in the next one